Hello Cancer friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Cancer May 2024 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. I'm calling the theme of this month Cosmic Courage Catalyst and you will see why very soon. And plus we have so many other things to discuss. There always are so many layers and I will go through all of the things that I think will help you make the most of this time. Three foundational things on which we can build our stories here to help you make the most of the potentials. The first is that this is a robustly positive month from the perspective of the aspects. Aspects are mathematical connections that planets make. It's like they're talking to each other. And depending on the type of connection they have, it depends on whether it's an argument or a hug. So we've got way more sweet connections than we do salty ones. We barely have any salty aspects this month. We do have a few that can go either way. Um, but it's, it's predominantly positive potential. The second pretty exciting thing is that we are getting out of the heat of eclipse season. The Aries Libra eclipse cycle that has been at play since early 2023 will keep going till mid 2025 or at the midpoint here. The heat of eclipse season was March and April. So now we're at the tail end and news and information and occurrences can still be rolling in, but we're out of the heat of the eclipse season. We're ha- out of the heat of that anxiety, of that you know, massive change. By now, things are starting to integrate by whatever changes happened. And because we're getting out of the Mercury retrograde period that covered the whole month of April, we're actually going to be in a period of time where we still have a lot of Aries energy, which is unusual for this time of the year. So we had a lot of Aries energy in March and April, but Because the latter part of March and all of April was covered in retrograde, it was very hard to use this energy. We would try and get stopped. You know, we would try, but then we wouldn't be able to see far enough ahead to be able to plan or to do anything with it. So now, by now, we've got most of the news that has come in and we still have the motivation, the inspiration, the oomph, the get up and go, you know, the ambition to do something with the things that happened. And what happened? A lot of stuff having to do with your work and career. Because that's what is flooded with energy for Aries. This has been in a 90 degree angle of pressure for you. So you've been feeling it. March, April, May, pressure, 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 cracking poor cancer open, right? So I don't want to say poor cancer really because I don't want to disempower you. But I know it sometimes feels like with aspects like this, like, why me? Like, give me a break already, right? So I just want to acknowledge that at the same time as uplift you to know that These pressure points can crack you into new levels of being and help you find places in yourself that you knew were there, strong, certain places that you can move forward from. And as I always like to say, when we have a ton of fire, as we do now, the fire acts as a fire underneath your bubbly, your pot of water, which makes it bubbly. So it agitates, it creates, it changes, causes you to change form, you know, and this is what's happening. So all of the fire of this time is forcing you to make some decisions involving work and career, or your, if you're not employed or you don't want to be employed, your passion projects, your place out in the world, your relationship with father figures or other, you know, authority figures in your life. You've had enough. You might have to step up. It doesn't mean you have to be angry, but it does mean you have to be decisive and you have the exact combination of elements that you need to make decisions this month, especially as the month progresses. Once we're at May 14th, we've now cleared out of all of the post-retrograde Mercury mischief. So April 1st through April 25th, Mercury was in retrograde every day past April 25th until May 13th. It's kind of getting, it's sort, you know, getting situated. And then from May 14th to the middle of July, you will have this amazing open period, the last of this length of for a while, because we will have a little touch point free from personal planet retrogrades later in the year. But since we have Mars retrograde at the end of the year, this is the last big window we have to try to get a bunch of stuff done, make big decisions. You know, um, this is a perfect time for big agreements, commitments, contracts, big sales, big purchases, anything having to do with events, decisions, um, you know, if you buy a car, you have to sell a house, you know, anything you have to do that's momentous, you'll have extra energy. It's also really great for travel because you don't have the added layer of mischief that the retrograde can bring. Not to say that retrogrades can't be fine for travel. It just adds that element of the unknown and more, more chaos, you know, is afoot. But at this time, especially in the second half of May, things are opening and you can see more than one step 
ahead of you, which is helpful for planning purposes. So you can see why I'm calling the theme of this month Cosmic Courage Catalyst, because all of this, this Aries energy represents courage. And as you can see with the water and the pot and all of this, it is a catalyst for extreme change, like you changing form. It is the element that we need for alchemy. And it is very much present at this time. And if you need courage to do something, all of these Aries placements are going to help you. If you need a catalyst, all of these Aries placements are going to help you. But all of that, as powerful as it is, is still only one piece or a few pieces of what's going on this month. We have Venus, the Sun, Uranus, Jupiter for a little while longer. Then Mercury will enter also. All of this in Taurus. Taurus is a much better placement for Cancer. It's grounded, it's practical, it's trustworthy, it's a rock, it's something that we can, that can hold the emotional flow of cancer. So you do have quite a bit of that, which can come in the support of friends and family, a group. You may find that you're building a team at this time. You may find that you're getting involved either as a leader in a group or sharing your voice in a group. And so team dynamics will flourish at this time. And if you need to build a team, this is a fantastic time to do it. If you have to add employees or if you have to delegate or if you need help with your business or your life, this is where networking can really, really, really come through. So say yes to networking at this time if you're intuitively inclined, unless you're intuitively disinclined. This is a time where going through the trouble of dealing with your social aversions may be really helpful, whether it's online or in person, you may find exactly what you need. Now, everybody gets kisses. All of the cancer placements get kisses this month, especially Venus. Every single cancer placement will get a kiss from Venus, which rules love, beauty, money, sustenance, nurturing, you know, relationships, finances. So that's exciting. And then those of you who are in the late degree placements, you are getting extended kisses from Uranus. And specifically those of you who are in the last six days. So the very... Um, late degree friends in July. So we'll say around the 14th, 15th, 16th through the rest of the sign. You all are getting your long awaited kiss from Jupiter. Since Jupiter went into Taurus in May of 2023, you all at the end have been waiting for your exact kiss and this month you will have it. Now, if you're earlier than those placements, you will have had your kiss already. If you're like the days around July 7th through around, you know, July 15th or somewhere around there, then you would be getting your kiss in April. And then if you're sooner than that, you would have gotten your kiss already. So no one's being left out of it. It's just a matter of being staggered. But Jupiter kisses are really big, could be long-term kisses that rule expansion and growth. And all of this has to do with sustenance and finances. So, you know, be on the lookout for that because that kiss can lock something in very long term for you. And again, it can center around community and community building and your tribe and networking and internet based projects and anything that has to do with the bettering of the community, technology, systems that rule technology, social media and social settings. Before we leave the Taurus discussion, I want to give you a few dates. May 7th, we have the new moon at 18 degrees of Taurus. All right, so this is a time where all cancers with everybody really in the zodiac can set intentions for financial growth and stability, focusing on new ways to enhance your income or manage your resources, planting seeds for a self-care regimen, you know, planting seeds for long-term goals of stability that matter to you. And everyone will get a kiss from this. But those of you who are between 13 and 23 degrees, so like July 3rd through around July 13th, the closer to around July 8th, you'll get an extra special kiss from that new moon on May 7th because of the proximity to that 18 degrees. We have a lot going on in Taurus this month. We're going to have three dates where Mercury, the Sun, and Venus all bump directly into the planet Uranus. And of course, in April, Jupiter was, was going to run into Uranus as well. And that's still going to be in effect, even though that happens April 20th, we'll still be feeling the after effects of that through May 8th. See, so April 20th, these two get together, Uranus and Jupiter, and that will echo out well, in, you know, well into May, even though it happens in April. 
and then Mercury, Venus, and the sun will come and cross the path of Uranus. And that can bring either good or challenging things because it's a conjunction. So it's not inherently, you know, notably easy or notably challenged. But we know it will be full of surprises because that's what Uranus does. It brings shocks, it brings upsets, it brings excitement, it brings vitality, it brings invigoration. And as each of those planets play, you know, move through there, the days are on the 13th, the 18th, and the 29th, expect things to come out of the blue. If there is an upset, then it will pass quickly. Um, you know, you just have to shake your ruffled feathers off, breathe a bit. If it is a positive thing, um, you know, you still may get your feathers ruffled a bit because, you know, this is a jostling energy, but you could have money come out of nowhere or you could owe money out of nowhere. You know, this is that type of thing. Sudden news can come in, you know, sudden insights can like lightning strike. And actually you could actually be struck by lightning too. So be careful of that. Sometimes these things are literal not just figurative. Now we've got two of the luckiest aspects of the year are happening this month. And that is when Venus and the sun, actually the sun first and then Venus on the 18th and then the 23rd will connect with Jupiter, the great expander, the protector of the inner planets, the gas giant that holds all the outer planets away from smashing into us. Literally, this is true. It's kind of interesting because the ancients called Jupiter the Great Benefic, so they must have known at that time that Jupiter was actually astronomically protecting us from its gravitational field, basically protects all the Earth and all of the inner planets closer to the sun from Jupiter from the outer planets collapsing into them. So Jupiter is what holds the golden ratio intact with the distance between the planets. There is actually the mean distance between the planets is in the golden ratio. This is something I talk about in my book, Planetology. But we see that, that Jupiter is a big piece here. And Jupiter is going to come in connection with Venus on May 23rd, which is love and beauty and money and relationships. And then, of course, the sun and the days are on the 18th. So that makes these days and days around there really good for planning important things that you want programmed into those things, which brings me back again to the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, being very, very good dates to start new things. Now let's talk about the movement into Gemini. So Mercury, Venus, the sun are all going to move into Gemini later in the month. And also on the 26th, Jupiter will get there. So this starts a new year of Jupiter from May through June 2025, May now through June 2025 of Jupiter enhancing your 12th house. The other planets will be there short term. They'll breeze by, making this a super busy time. Lots of mobility, lots of chatting. You've got social connections coming from the 11th house being full and these Gemini planets. So expect to be busy and interacting with people possibly more than you like when you actually need some 12th house rest and respite. So as always, try to balance this activity with your quiet sacred space. And so over the next year, you're going to have Jupiter enhance your intuition. Cancers are very intuitive by nature, right? Your moon rules, water sign, very internal. But you tend to get your fears mixed up with your intuition. And sometimes you can't tell if what you're thinking is what someone else is thinking or your own thing. So your process is a process of discernment, of being able to tell which things are intuition and which things are feeding from other people's energy. And over the next year, you'll have a really good opportunity to enhance that discernment and to expand your connections to the ethereal realms and your understanding of your inner world, including your, your inner landscape, you know, your genetic composition, your ancestral stories that could be influencing you. And, you know, and really just communicating with what the all that is, you know, the Akashic records, past life regression, past life regression doesn't only have to pull up, you know, there's room in, in this explanation for no matter what your religious or other beliefs are. If you believe we only have one life, then past life could mean energetics of your ancestors coming in through your DNA that you're tuning into. If you believe we have more than one life and this is a soul thing, you can tune into soul stories from the past, but whatever it is, all of it is very much housed in that 12th house, which is activated for the short term here in May. It's activated for the long term over the next year. And this is also your house of dreams at night. If you're not meditating already, this placement can help you meditate. And 
it's a really good time to try to cut out some of the mischief and the worry in your mind space. It might make it a little bit harder to sleep with all this energy rumping and bumping around your 12th house. So it could fuel insomnia, which may have already started from the eclipse season. So hopefully you can find a way to clear things out and get some sleep. It's possible that the pursuit of better sleep and more sleep and better quality sleep may be a journey that Jupiter is taking you on over the next year because it's actually one of the greatest foundations for our health and wellness and sanity and grounding our intuition. You can also, before you go to bed at night, ask your subconscious mind questions to reveal things to you, to give you insights about things, to help you answer questions, to clear out your, you know, daily, uh, garbage that you've accumulated throughout the, the day, you can use your subconscious mind. It is very open to guidance that way. And those few minutes before you go to sleep and the few minutes after you wake up are particularly great times to have a line right into your subconscious mind. So you can really utilize that, especially in May. And then Jupiter will bring that utilization out for the next year. Okay. So the last date I'm going to give you is the days around May 21st. We've got a full moon in Sagittarius fullness, completion, fruition, possibly drama for better or worse coming in the energy of immigration, passports, long distance travel, different countries, different cultures, different languages, teaching, learning. This could be a great time to embark on a learning journey or a teaching project or plan your next big adventure or, you know, have really great philosophical discussions where you talk about the connectedness of all things that could be very fulfilling. And this is going to highlight your sixth house of health, pets, your daily work. So there could be some freedom that comes here. You know, maybe you find a really great dog park for your dog and now they can run and be happy. Or maybe you find your perfect pet and you get your perfect pet, especially the second half has very long of May has very long term energy, but you, know, you have to trust the synchronicities. If there's something popping up sooner than that, then go with the flow. But this could be a great time to, to give an animal their perfect home, especially between the middle of May and the middle of um, July, since there's, you know, no retrograde energy. And just having an exciting change to your routine, maybe taking a little trip, getting a different um, change of scenery or something like that could be coming with this full moon. But if you have a passport, keep it close by. And if you don't, you may want to work before this time to have it so that you have it available because it does rule long distance adventures. So I've given you some dates that are relevant this month. If you love more dates and want to know the aspects and how they may manifest, then definitely sign up for my free VIP community at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Just put your name and email address there. And then when you're in the, um, you'll get the welcome letter, then you click on the archives and you can put whatever month you're looking for and it will be there. Then... You can access my secret star portal, which has all extra content, plus early content, plus my written horoscopes and so much more. And if you want to learn astrology with me, including my basics course or my become a professional astrologer mastery certification course, you can up level there. You can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com forward slash eclipses to understand the eclipse rhythm that's at play. Even when we're not in eclipse season, you can see what storylines are happening for the years of each eclipse story. And for my easy access player, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com forward slash astrology and whatever is current, this is constantly updating. So my podcast playlist will be there. My video playlist will be there. And if there's any videos that ha need timestamp, it, it will be somewhere there. If you're on YouTube, make sure you click the bell because that will be how you get my notifications right into your inbox. If you're subscribed, but you didn't click the bell, then you might not be hearing from me. But if you click the bell, then you can. And you can always look in the notes underneath the podcast or the notes underneath the video by clicking the little more button underneath the video title and then clicking more again to reveal the notes. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.